Hi everyone. So today we are going to talk about uh, the multi-region design in a hub spoke architecture. So in my previous previous video, we talked about a single region hub spoke design. So if you haven't already um, uh, watched that video, um, be sure to check that out. All right, um, so with that, I'm going to take a few minutes to get you familiar with my screen. Um, so here on my screen, I have um, draw.io, which is integrated with VS Code. And then here I have some layers in draw.io. Um, and then, of course, this was my previous design, the hub spoke um, single region, and today we're going to focus on the multi region design. In the center, um, in the canvas, you have region one here and then region two. And what you are seeing is the base uh, layer uh, in a classic um, hub spoke architecture in the bow tie or a crisscross design, uh, a crisscross design, a fully redundant design. All right, so back. Um, to uh, the base design, which is the bow tie design. In this bow tie design, we are using um, express route uh, in a bow tie crisscross fashion. But I also worked with another customer where we had VPN, we had BGP running over the IPsec tunnels, and then you could do bow tie design uh, with IPsec tunnels as well. And another variation of that design is express route with VPN failover. Uh, for today's scenario, we're going to use express route in a bow tie design, and that is a scenario number one. So as I mentioned um, before, um, you could um, turn on these layers using the little eye icon over here. And I also have the optional IP layer. IP layer. Um, sometimes that facilitates the discussion. So uh, for most uh, of this discussion, we will uh, turn um, the IP uh, layer off. So let's go a uh, look at this express route bow tie design in detail. So let's look at how the inter region flows work. So I'll turn on the inter region flows layer and you as you could see in the blue line for spoke one uh, to talk to spoke three networks. Um, it traverses um, the express route gateway and then from there um, it has two paths, two connections to the MSEE and it can route over either one of those. And then the second flow is your data center uh, in region one to data center in region two. Um, if it's in standard express route circuit, of course you could use our global reach or you could always leverage your MPLS provider that you already have. All right, so that's the inter region flows. Now let's look at the spoke to on prem connectivity in the next layer. So in the next in this layer, I'm going to demonstrate spoke uh, in region one uh, talking to your data center in region two. And so that's the path that it is taking. Of course, you could do spoke in region one talking to data center in region one, and that's this green flow, flow right here. This green flow right here, uh, right there. OK, and then let's look at um, some of the right routing considerations um, in this um, in uh, in this design. So as you can uh, see in the, as a red animated flow um, in this design, uh, when spoke one talks to spoke three uh, from Azure, we ECMP this uh, traffic equal cost multipathing through both of these connections, right? So through both of these MSEE. So the fact that the traffic hairpins off of these MSEE, they would introduce latency. So that's one of the consideration. Again, 
this demonstrate the red doesn't mean the flows don't work. It's just some of the considerations that I'm calling out. Uh, of course, another way um, to do this design is to peer the spoke directly with the spoke, um, but that would involve a lot of V-net earrings, but that's also another variation of the design. So let's look at how uh, we can address um, this latency uh, and this design with another uh, variation. And also there is one more flow to call out um, as, as working with another customer where we ran into this is um, if you have spoke one um, to spoke two connectivity, depending on how you're advertising your summary routes, that could sometimes potentially help pin through the MSEE and you really don't want to do that. So be aware of that pattern. Um, depending on you know how your summary routes are advertised. Uh, the best way to do this is is really using my the next design. So I'm going to um, go um, through the next design. It really sets the stage for this scenario number two. So scenario number two and let's turn off scenario number one. So scenario number two is uh, what I called Heather's design. Heather has written a fantastic blog. I'll, I'll put a link to her blog in, in uh, below uh, he, uh, in the video. Uh, and what this design gives you is you, you insert a firewall, an Azure firewall in both the regions, and uh, that gives you not only the spoke to spoke connectivity and spoke to internet, um, egress, uh, but it also gives you, uh, it influences the routing behavior between regions. So let's uh, look at that. So what happens in this scenario is you could create a firewall subnet route table, a UDR that points all of the remote spoke networks um, via this firewall in the second region. In other words, the firewall in region one uh, will use the next hop of the firewall in region two to route to the spokes in region two. All right, so that's what this design is about. Um, again, it there is a link in uh, below that you can check it out if you want to see the how. Um, this particular session is again envisioning and um, showing that this is possible. Now with this design, um, you would run into the 400 uh, limit, the user defined route uh, per route table limit, so be aware of that. So that sort of sets the stage for the next scenario is in the event that you want to learn this routes dynamically instead of using the UDR, uh, how do we do that? So now let's look at scenario number three that would explain um, how we can uh, achieve that. So let me light up scenario number three. So uh, in scenario number three, um, I would warn that we are now getting into level 500 of Azure networking. Um, there is a lot to see uh, on the screen, so I'm going to take a few minutes to break this down. So let's look at um, the different um, the pieces of this design. So in here um, you have the NVA that um, uh, with the route server, just like how we saw in the single region design. Similarly, in region two, you have the NVA uh, peering with um, the route server. Of course, there's an EBGP peering between the NVA and the two route servers, and then the route server has IBGP peering with the VPN and the ER gateway. Then you have um, you have an NVA here, which is VXLAN capable on both the regions. And then you use the, the VXLAN technology, uh, which, which is essentially layer two over layer three. So you set up VXLAN interfaces on both ends um, of the tunnel, and then you, and you here, you establish and 
EBGP peering over those VX LAN interfaces. Um, and again, like I mentioned, um, this design using uses VX LAN, which is layer two over layer three. All right, so I have um, a lot of captures over here. Over here, if you turn on the VXLAN captures layer, it, it shows you exactly how um, the different interfaces on the NVA would look like uh, when you set that up. Again, like I mentioned, this does go into level 500, but all of the content is there. I also have, I'm using um, a Linux based NVA for VXLAN and for BGP, I'm using the bird routing daemon on the Linux based NVA. Um, I'll be sharing the configs uh, for the uh, bird NVA on my GitHub as well. So now let's look at how this design influences um, the north south and the east west uh, flows. So let's light up the north south flows. And the, the way the north south flows work is very similar to what we did in the single region design where the NVA advertises the quad zero route and that influences um, the egress behavior from spoke one to the internet and also from on-prem or the data center um, to the internet, right? Um, and now let's look at turn off the north south layer and we'll turn on the east west layer and you could see that uh, now the spoke in region one talks to uh, spoke in region three using the vx land tunnel all right and before it was hair pinning uh, through the msee um, so this is a much more optimal design um, of course, anytime you're using uh, VXLAN, um, you have to keep the MTU uh, in mind. So be sure to uh, look at my notes over here for MTU considerations. And lastly, um, you know, if you if you want to, uh, if you are looking at it from this NVA's perspective. So let me call out a couple more things here. So let's say that you're looking at it from this NVA's perspective. Um, I'm showing um, the three, uh, how the three uh, BGP peerings are established um, on this NVA. And then you can see that this NVA uh, routes the 10.3 network, which is the remote network um, through the, the VX, next top as the VXLAN um, interface on the remote side. All right, so that's what this, um, uh, this particular route um, is showing. All right, so with that, um, I will, um, and saying that, you know, the, these are the scenarios that I have um, documented so far. Uh, again, keep a growth mindset as new features come in and new scenarios come in. Um, you know, I'd be updating my GitHub uh, with, with those, so be sure to check that out. And with that, I'll end this recording and I'll see you in the next video.